Good morning. We gather in the spirit of faith as we pray for our loved ones. We gather in the spirit of hope, knowing that God who loves us has called our loved ones home. So in that spirit of faith and joy, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we know that we are broken, that we are wounded by our sin. We ask for the grace to always strive for holiness. And as we pray this Holy Mass for those who are already passed from this world, we pray for those souls in purgatory. They may need our prayers, our assistance. And we pray for ourselves that we may always strive for holiness and faithfulness. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. And as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We offer this Mass for all souls. We also pray for Felipe, and Remedias Hernandez, Ruben, Alicia, and David Barrera, and Daniel Hobbs. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as parks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples. And the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care it is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread a table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gives me, but that I shall raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. At every Mass, funeral Mass, we hear these beautiful words. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. Every funeral Mass, this beautiful words from the preface is proclaimed. These remind us of something very important so often we forget. For your faithful Life is changed, not ended. When we celebrate all souls, we pray for those who have died. In fact, throughout the whole church, throughout the world, every mass, souls are being lifted up. 
There's even a special mass that we pray for all souls in purgatory. Every church has to do this. You have to pick at least one mass, that that mass is only for all souls, where every other mass is specifically given or offered for certain souls that people offer the masses for. But every church, every church has at least one mass where they pray for all souls across the world. This is very important because it reminds us that we, as a people of faith, are on a journey. We're on a journey towards heaven, God willing. But we also recognize that in our brokenness, in our woundedness, something needs to take place in our souls. And we know that it is God who does this. In the Catechism, we read this. From the beginning of the church has honored the memory of the dead and offered prayers and suffrage for them. Above all, the Eucharistic sacrifice, so that thus purified, they may attain the beatific vision. The question is, why does the church have to pray for the dead? Aren't they in heaven? This is very important because I think there are a lot of Catholics today who are very confused with the church's teaching on this issue. We pray for the dead because those souls may be in purgatory. Otherwise, it would be a waste of our time. The souls who already triumph in heaven, who are present to God, the beatific vision, don't need prayers. They made it. They're with God. They're in the presence of all the saints, Mother Mary, the angels, worshiping Almighty God. We pray for those souls who are still in need of purgation, being purified. The word purgatory in the Latin term means purge, which means to cleanse, to purge. The church calls this the final purification of the elect. These are souls who died in the state of grace but have what we call attachments to sin, venial sins. And these attachments, these venial sins, need to be purged away, removed. And that is why in purgatory there's suffering involved. And so many people, we go, oh my, but the mystics, yes, there is suffering involved. Because the only way we begin to learn how to die to self, Mary, it's dying to self. We know how hard it is, right, to fight addictions. We know how difficult it is. We say, I'm not going to gossip anymore, and there we are gossiping already. We know how hard it is. We know how often, I'm not going to watch this movie because I know it offends God, and there we are watching it. That attachment to sin, the attachment to the addiction, the inclination towards the fleshly things. So. Scripture tells us that nothing defiled can enter heaven. Nothing defiled can enter heaven. That's important to understand that. Because this is where the teaching of purgatory comes from. From that understanding that we must be in the state of grace. No sin. In right relationship to God. Nothing defiled. Mary was pure. She went straight to heaven. But the rest of us, I would imagine most of us, are going to have to go through purgation. Are going to have to go through that state of purgatory. Remember, it's the soul who is being purged. And there we will begin to realize what it really means. As the Catechism explains this, paragraph 1030, all who die in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified, are indeed assured of their eternal salvation, but after death, they undergo purification, so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy 
of heaven. You know, people, they struggle. Father, I don't want to hear about purgatory. <laughs> they struggle with this. I, I, I try to do this in funerals. Oh, I've had some letters from some people. Very angry. Upset. Because they think that purgatory is another place forever. Purgatory is not forever. Purgatory is a time. There is no time in, in God when you're in that place, but it's the time, whatever that means for God, where a person's being purged, being ready to go to heaven. That person is destined for heaven. If you're in purgatory, praise be to God, because you're destined for heaven. You're just being cleansed. You're just preparing your soul to receive the fullness of God's grace, the fullness of God's love. Imagine a, a vase with water, but there's some dirt in it. You're not going to put flowers in a dirty vase. What do we do? We dump the water. We clean the vase. We fill it with pure water. Then we put the, the flowers. We don't put flowers in a dirty vase. Well, the same with the soul. You can't pull the fullness of God's love, the fullness of God's grace in our souls. If they're dirty, our souls need to be purified, cleansed, made ready for God. Remember, God doesn't only give 90%. He doesn't only give us 90%. God will give you and me 100% of his grace, of his love. To the top of our heads, full of grace, Mother Mary, full of grace. And that is what God wants for us, to be full of grace. That's why when we listen to these, uh, sad to say, today many Catholics think that we automatically go to heaven. I see this, and it's very sad when I do funerals. Because sometimes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Silence. These are non-practicing Catholics. They don't know God very much. I'm not there to judge them, but it's very sad. When it comes to communion, hardly any come up to receive communion. And that's because I have to say it. If you're not practicing your faith, please do not come forward to receive communion. Indeed, for your faithful, life is changed, not ended. Heaven are for the faithful, those who lived a righteous life, strived for holiness, and died in the state of grace with no mortals or venue sin. Purgatory are for those who died with faith but still may have venial sins on their soul and attachments to this earthly life. Remember, hell are for those who have rejected God, who, who have rejected his salvation and who have rejected his mercy. St. Catherine of Giona had a vision of purgatory and spoke about it as both a place of great suffering and great joy. Essentially, she explained that when a person dies in the state of grace, they see themselves as they were made to be by God and are ashamed of their fallen state and attachment to sin. That's interesting, huh? We will see ourselves as we are meant to be before God. And so, when we see that reality, we want to be purified. We want to be healed. As a result, they suffer out burning love and a desire to be with God. But knowing that they are not yet ready, they embrace the pain of purgatory to purify themselves to join God in heaven. That's beautiful. You realize your brokenness. You realize you're, you need some help. And you rejoice. Yes, Lord. Purify me. Purge me. 
remove those attachments from my heart. And we all have them. We all have them. We all struggle. Purgatory is another example of God's mercy. Imagine for a moment there was only heaven and hell. Where would be most of us? Where would be most of us? Thank God <laughs> we have purgatory. Thank God there's a state of purgation for us who struggle to be holy. Thank God there's a God who loves us, who does not want to give us just half of goodness. He wants to fill us with all that he, he has to give us. Thank God that God knows best. And this place was created for us so that we may grow in holiness and be ready to be filled with God's grace. Therefore, Holy Mother Church sets aside one special day throughout the year for us to really focus and see the importance of praying for the souls who have departed from this world. Do not be saddened. I pray for my mom and dad, my sister, all those who have died in my family every day. I have my little book that I write living intentions and deceased. And by name, I pray for every single one of them. And I say, Lord God, you know best. If my dad or my mom need purification, praise be to God. I want it to be full of God's grace. I pray that those who die today may die in this state of grace, in right relationship. And so what takes us from this truth when we walk away from God? Hell was not created by God. Hell was created by when we rejected him. When Satan rejected God, when man rejected God, hell was created for those who said, I want nothing to do with God. I want to follow my own path. I want to seek my own way. That is where hell was created. Hell is a departure from the ways of God. It's a rejection of mercy from Jesus. And we don't want to be there. Because remember, after we die, what's left is eternity. Eternity with God and the saints and the angels, eternity in hell, separated from God's love and mercy. I don't know about you, I want to be in heaven and pray for your loved ones and pray for yourselves that we will always remain faithful to our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the faithful. We believe in the communion of, this, of saints, confident that act of faith. Let us reach out in prayer for all who have passed through death, especially those who need a charity of our intercession. For the church, may the Holy Spirit guide her in proclaiming the truth of salvation and the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For government leaders, may they be blessed with fortitude in their efforts to protect life from conception through natural death. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, may the healing presence of God bring them comfort today and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those gathered here today, may the Lord strengthen us in virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our beloved dead, especially those for whom this Mass is offered, all souls, Felipe and Remedios Hernandez, Ruben, Alicia, and David Barrera, may they rest joyfully in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord of life, into your care we commend the souls of those who wait to share in the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, which will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and with archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Marincada, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We pray for all souls. We also pray for Felipe, Remedios Hernandez, Ruben, Alicia, and David Barrera, and Daniel Hobbs. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The greatest gift we can offer a soul who has passed is the Holy Mass, the Paschal Mystery, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. That's what we do at Mass. But sad to say, there are many Catholics today that have no Mass for their funeral because the kids no longer believe. So they go to the cemetery, they do some whatever, no Mass, no Rosary. Very sad. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await for the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. But only say the words in my soul.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the St. Michael prayer. Amen. The Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, pray for Pope Francis. We're going, the church is going through some difficult times right now. A lot of confusion. Just to clarify something, a pope cannot teach morality, I mean, cannot change morality. Pope has no power to change morality. What's set in stone from sacred scripture, holy tradition, the pope has no power to change. He can clarify, he can, you know, but he can't change it. So there's a lot of confusion, whether it's out of context, where it's not, it's hard to say. But when it comes to marriage, marriage is between a man and a woman. And no person can change that. That comes straight from sacred scripture. God created male and female, and the two will become one. Secondly, when we promote anything that promotes what we call intrinsic evil, we are not obliged to do that. We can't support anything that will lead people to sin, like civil unions for gay couples. We can never support that because it leads them to sin, to the act of fornication, which goes against the morality of our church and the sacred scriptures. Very important, very clear, but there's also a lot of things happening. I always like to tell Catholics to be aware and to pray Know your faith in and out. Know it well. Because just because we say things doesn't always make it right as a clergy. Sometimes it's an opinion. Sometimes it's an afterthought. Sometimes it's because we're confused. Sometimes it's because we're misguided by false compassion. You have to know your faith. You have to know your faith so you don't get deceived. And we know that can happen because Jesus speaks of that. He speaks of many false prophets coming and deceiving the faithful from the truth. Know your faith. Let us pray for him that he clarifies it. I know there's a lot of people in Rome right now on their knees praying for him, and the cardinals and bishops are challenging him to clarify what he said. And I hope he does because we don't need more division in our church. Amen? Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth. Our Mass is ended. Pray for the souls. Amen. God bless you all. <laughs>